Hey everybody, we all expected the Boeing Starliner to crash, but it didn't crash, as you know. But because the entire planet Earth thought it might crash, especially NASA, there is some amazing footage. Everything from the undocking to the ISS seeing it enter the Earth's atmosphere to high altitude photography to its landing. I have never seen such incredible footage of a re-entry. And I stayed up all night watching it just for you. So here's the edited highlights of the Boeing Starliner not crashing. Well done. The truth is out there. Atlas V rocket from Complex 31 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. That was the 5th. They arrived at the International Space Station on June 6th. During that June 6th rendezvous, NASA and Boeing identified helium leaks and experienced issues with the Starliner's reaction control thrusters as the spacecraft approached the space station. Since then, engineering teams have completed a significant amount of work collecting and reviewing data, conducting flight and ground testing, hosting independent reviews with agency propulsion experts and developing various return contingency plans. Uncertainty and uh, lack of expert concurrence did not meet the agency's safety and performance requirements for human spaceflight, thus prompting NASA's decision to return Boeing Starliner spacecraft to Earth without the astronauts, but Wilmore and Sunny Williams aboard. On Thursday afternoon, the hatches were closed between Starliner and the International Space Station. And earlier today at 5.04 p.m. Central, the docking hooks released Starliner, allowing it to separate and begin moving away from the space station and into place for its journey home. We saw a beautiful display of Starliner's thrusters there. Four orbital maneuvering and attitude control thrusters on Starliner's service module are now firing, slowing Starliner down as the capsule begins its journey back to Earth. This will take about 59 seconds to complete. We're hearing uh, good, all good, uh, all thrusters firing well so far. It's blackout time again, uh, last about four and a half minutes. We've got... Uh, about three and a half left of it. Uh, after that, uh, the milestones we will be watching for include a uh, forward heat shield jettison at 1056, when Starliner is about 4.3 miles above the Earth. Very soon after that, uh, almost immediately, drogue chutes deploy. Those uh, give the give a little bit of an initial slowdown to the vehicle before the really uh, large main parachutes deploy. That happens when the Starliner is about two and a half miles above the Earth. This uh, is a live view from the International Space Station where we're able to get a view of uh, Starliner's track as it comes in. We are now uh, less than 10 minutes away from landing at the White Sands Space Harbor, scheduled for uh, 10 or 11 p.m. Central. Also uh, getting reports that the WB-57 is also able to see Starliner now as it begins coming in for its... Uh, for its landing. We've still got just about a minute left to go before Starliner comes out of its uh, blackout period. And this is the view from the WB-57, one of uh, NASA's aircraft that is uh, at the uh, landing site has been uh, been uh, staged and ready to pick a Starliner or uh, pick up the view of Starliner as it comes in and that is what we are seeing now. And the, they're filming this video from about 16,000 feet. The BB-57 should continue to uh, give us a view until the drogue parachutes deploy, and then we hope to pick it up with the Cessna that is also in the area. And flight controllers here in the room are reporting that we are out of that blackout period and everything is looking good. Starliner remaining nominal as she returns to Earth. We're about three minutes away from the forward heat shield Jettisoning, that's the next milestone we're looking for. Starliner is currently about 27 miles above the Earth, and the team at uh, White Sands reporting that they have seen it. We got a tally hole from them uh, reported uh, remotely. This view is coming from the Cessna that's also in the area, picking up uh, Starliner, now, Starliner now from its lower altitude, about 6,000 feet above, whereas the WB-57 is about 16,000 feet up. We are now just uh, six minutes and 22 seconds away from landing. We should also just be a couple of minutes away from the forward heat shield jettison, which will bring on the drogue parachute deploy, followed by the main parachutes. 
And the strobe lights on Starliner are now on. Starliner is now over the landing site, and that strobe light will help the teams actually track Starliner on the ground because it is very dark out there. Now about 12 miles above uh, the landing site and just five minutes away from landing. Watching now for the forward heat shield jettison that should be coming up, uh, again making way from the, for the parachute deployment. All right, and that action you're seeing on your screen, forward heat shield and drogues out. Really interesting view of this uh, coming down from the WB-57. See those two drogue parachutes uh, now deployed. They slow the uh, vehicle down initially until it gets to a, uh, a safe uh, speed for the enormous main parachutes to, to follow. Now back to a view from the Cessna aircraft in the uh, vicinity of the landing site. Again, this is a, a view from a little lower than the WB-57 we were seeing. The next thing we're going to see here is the three main parachutes come out, and everything will happen pretty quickly from that point on. After those mains are out, we'll see the uh, bottom heat shield that has been protecting uh, Starliner through its journey through the atmosphere come off. That makes way for the landing airbags to deploy. And there's the main parachutes there on your screen. We see three out, currently reefing. And the teams at the uh, landing uh, recovery teams report that they heard uh, the booms as those came out. Three good mains fully open there. You can see Starliner in a slight tilt, so we're going to see the rotation handle move here shortly, and it will level out Starliner. But three good parachutes looking great. Just a little over two minutes until the expected landing time, and we heard the rotational handle has been released, so you can see that uh, tilt evened out. Next up is the back heat shield jettison. And there it goes. That again makes way for the airbag inflation. Nice to see that. You can see the airbags deploying there on your screen. Those airbags are filled with nitrogen as they guide Starliner safely back to the desert floor. Just a beautiful sight as Starliner makes its way to the sands of New Mexico. And flight controllers confirming six good airbags. This view still coming to us from the Cessna. We've got uh, about just about a minute left to go until the expected touchdown. We'll be watching for that time for you. Just about 15 seconds away from expected touchdown. You're seeing the ground there in your screen as we get closer. Touchdown. Starliner is back on Earth. That landing coming at 11.01 and 35 seconds Central Time, 10.01 and 31 seconds Mountain Time at White Sand Space Harbor at the U.S. Army's missile range in New Mexico. Our landing and recovery teams will now wait for clearance before making their way to the spacecraft.